Hey guys, it's Nastia. Welcome back to my channel. And today we have a very, very special guest. My dad's official YouTube debut. Um, <laughs> we took a lot of convincing, um, but we thought it would be kind of cool to go back to Beijing and re-watch my Olympic routines and react to them. So this is going to be a reaction video of my Olympic routines. <laughs> we've ever really watched we've watched like my routines sometimes but like we've never fully talked about the routines and also for me what you were thinking yeah finally 12 <laughs> so, years later 12 we years might, later we might discuss that probably. um all right so we're gonna start with vault um i would have to say this was the best vault of my entire life yeah so the scariest world of your entire yeah. life because you know how dangerous this is yeah to try to stick one and a half you we've got some examples that people been trying to stick the blind landing and yeah how they end up so that was but i do scary. remember we'll watch it here in a second or i guess we'll watch it and then we'll um well, right before i remember in my warm-up you said i took one step on my landing and you said do the exact same thing but try to stick it and then you said you regretted kind of saying that. Big time, big time. Because I remember that when you were a younger gymnast, I asked you the same thing on the floor exercise. Mm. Do you remember that? Two and a half. And what happened? Mm -hmm. You land right on your bum. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what happens. Obviously, like the gymnasts or gymnastics fans that are watching, you kind of know when it is a blind landing. It's really, really hard to stick. And if you're trying to stick, things can go really wrong. Um, but in my mind, like as soon as he said that, I had this dream and, and I'll do a separate YouTube video about this one day. But basically I had a dream the night before the Olympics that I like visualized my entire competition. And in my dream, I stuck my landing. So when he said that, it was almost like, wait, he must know about, obviously he did not. But yes, yeah, so when he said to stick it, I think like inside I kind of laughed because I was like, well, duh, that's what's going to happen. So, okay, let's watch it. <laughs> um, but I was nervous, obviously. Um, nervous but confident. I think, especially on your first event, you want to, like, start off right. A decent, not excellent. <laughs> so <that> scary. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, as soon as that happened, were you thinking, like, okay, this is going to be a good day? Or were you like, like, what did you think as soon as that happened? Well, there's two events that I was very nervous about. This, mm. because you have to do excellent mm. in order to be competitive. Right. And the bars. If you don't do bars. It's over. It's over. And that, yeah. And obviously. You I was, mo yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I was, I think, most nervous for bars. And that's which is the next event but for us it was always like as you said like if you do not and not just like make your bar routine like it has to be really good because that's where we had an advantage that's what the plan was yeah you were behind about a point on the vault last year but what was the plan a few years back you make it up point and a half on the bars yeah and that's why this is the event coming up mm -hmm. is the most important for you. So obviously the code has changed a little bit, but I remember when you gave me a piece of paper and it was literally like this bar routine. First of all, I couldn't even do half the skills, I think. And it was like, I just remember like kind of looking at it and at the very bottom it said 7.7, .7, which was my start value. And at the time, even having like a 7.0 start value was like, whoa. And then I and I don't even know if I had that yet. I might have been able to do a bar with like a 7.1 or something. Yeah, I believe so, somewhere in that area, but the- 7.7 seven was like unheard of at the time. Well, but, well, you have to be a little bit bold. Yeah, you have, yeah. Otherwise, why? No chance, Otherwise, right. why? You know, you, I know your dreams and 
you obviously know my <laughs> thoughts on it. But uh, yeah, this is this is so critical. And of course, by that time, in that time, actually, last year, I knew every single gymnast in the top five. I believe five or seven. Mm -hmm. Every start value in all the scores, basically, and all around. Mm -hmm. So that's the. It wasn't just throw up, throw the number. It right. Was just must do. Yeah. But how did you come up with? Was that like? How did you come up with that? Well, it took a little bit, yeah. but but again, I'm not gonna say that you don't know the skills, as you mentioned that you half of that you did not. When you were little, we've, we've done our homework. Mm -hmm. As I always, always preach in, in gymnastics, you have to do your homework. You competed those skills, those heelies, if you remember, yeah, but yeah. you finish up in the uh, oh, next yeah, grade. True, yeah. And that's close to The that. movement's the same, but it's doing it in front yeah. of the bar. But and in Ono, I had not, never right. done it. And that took a, at least a year to at least just get it. I remember a lot of people always ask me, like, what was the hardest skill for you to learn? First of all, anything on vault, obviously. And an oh no, because it was a skill that it's not just like adding another half twist or half turn to a skill. It was like something completely different. And I think at the beginning, I'm a very visual person and a visual learner. So if I'm able to like watch it or visualize myself doing it and like you feel it, I was like, that skill, like, it was every other time I'd fall, like, on top of the bar or, like, and obviously we started doing it in the pit and it was fun, all that. But I remember being so frustrated thinking, how am I going to learn this skill? And I had it in my routine twice, the second one with another half turn. And then, you know, it was, like, this whole combination. Long story short, we did it. <laughs> um, and, but, yeah, so let's watch my bar routine. Um, as you said... For me, this was the routine I was most nervous about because if I had even a slight mistake, it was over. <laughs> well, slight mistake you might, you know, but it, it, the truth is this is exactly how we end up. Yeah. Our plan was you making up another half a tenth. Yeah. You remember you all around how much you want? Yeah. About six tenths? Right. So that tells you our plan Yeah. came to... Perfection. <laughs> yeah, it worked. Um, okay, and then also what makes me nervous is at a competition like Worlds or the Olympics is you wait for the green light to come on. So basically when the judges, you're like taking a deep breath because it's like I feel like the nerves because you don't know when the judges are going to be ready for you to go, obviously. And when the green light comes on, you have 30 seconds to mount the apparatus or else you get a zero. That being said, in the all around, when someone goes before you, they could light the bars a completely different way. Like they take all the chalk off. There might be honey, water, like whatever on. And your coach literally has sometimes a minute, sometimes five. Like, you know, you don't really know when the judges are going to be ready. So it's a lot of pressure on the coach, too, to get the bars right, um, the, the balance of the bars, the right. chalk, the feelings, everything. The, the, you know, and I remember yeah. actually in this competition, they were still a little, it obviously it wasn't your fault. The judges were ready so fast that the green light came on. I remember you were still moving and I started getting like anxious and nervous because I was like, okay, 30 seconds. And then you're obviously thinking about your routine. So yeah. Okay. So we'll watch this. So obviously you're allowed to be standing yeah. on the podium, um, especially for a release move. So this first skill, this is kind of like where it starts the combination. So it's the first Ono, oh pretty good. Yeah. Also yeah. pretty good. And then Ono oh and a half, little short. Ginger was good. I struggled a little bit with my, pa oh, no, sorry, wrong part. <laughs> to catch it first. Oh God, that's a pretty long routine. Yeah, it was long. I was a little far on that. But do you remember we had some problems? Yeah. Kind of like. A few like, days, actually. Yeah. You were a little anxious. Always. Yeah. And then the dismount, obviously. So a pretty big step on that landing. But I think as soon as I finished that routine, 
I was relieved. I was like, thank God. <laughs> <Yeah. It happened." laughs> and, and, you know, I think a lot of people are like, oh, but beam is next. I don't know. Like, yes, it's four inches wide. It's nerve wracking, but. Well, I mean, you gave yourself a chance. Yeah. This is it right here. Mm -hmm. The rest of it just has to be normal. There is not too much stress, but that, this is the event where you have to shine basically. Yeah. There's no other ways. Yeah. I had so to do it. It is happened. And after that, I actually wasn't so much nervous on the beam anymore. I wasn't nervous, like, at all, which is so crazy because I think it all came down to the train, the preparation and the training that we put into it, right? Like, we were, I was most prepared in that, on this day, in that moment, and, and that's what you kind of always said was, like, it's all about the preparation and the training and... Um, so I was confident, not in like a sense of, a uh, confident of like being the best, but just confident in yourself and your routine and your skills. In my beam routine, I had been doing, you know, all those skills for, for kind were, of a long time. Yeah, you were very confident. Yeah. And comfortable on the beam. Those yeah. skills you've done forever since you were little, really. And that was, again, that was another, that was a plan. Do not go too crazy on this event. Just be consistent, be normal, mm -hmm. do your normal routine. You, because your body is built that way. Right. You know, if you do normal, you will get your thing mm -hmm. done. You, know, yeah. you will get your score. That was it. Once again, the bars, that's what makes me nervous because it was physical and you obviously not the strongest gymnast in the national team at that time. Yeah. So that should be easy for you. Yeah, and then I think, yeah, and on beam, so I was last up on beam, which I hated going last, just be, I always like to like, warm up, go first, get it over with, be done, but I was used to being towards the end on bars and beam, in like a team lineup, for instance, so, in it's out of your control, like, when you're going, obviously, so I think the hardest part was just the waiting for it to be my turn, Exactly. And like staying yeah. mentally. That's why I get actually nervous when you've been you've been too cool over there. <laughs> I was sitting on the floor the and entire that time. Normally, never happened. I know. I actually would come to you and they tell me to like yeah, tell little. me to keep moving. And I didn't want to, you know, get get too much into you. I mean, you're old gymnast by that time, you know, so you knew what you were doing. But at the same time, that's my job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to make it better so that's the only part I was a little nervous because you were the last one and you, know, you too when you too much in yeah. yourself I was a little nervous in there you see you've been sitting a little too yeah, long yeah you're moment. like okay come on let's get up and start <laughs> moving and I was like okay it's not very good for being like yeah. at least but anyways um, yeah. yeah okay so um here we go beam routine So like every other event, um, bars is a little bit more like rapid and fast. Um, but I think for beam, it was, it was truly just, you know, you always had told me little, little bitty things and corrections or just not even corrections, but things to say. Um, and so that was always what I was remembering, like, you know, on connections, make sure to like keep, keep it moving. Um, yeah. I mean, that's important. Uh, and you remember, I always talk to you on the practice. My yeah. mouth always yeah. say, I always yeah. say something. That's what I talk to my yeah. coaches right now. You know, you talk to the gymnasts before they go to the skill, not after, because yeah. that's kind of too late. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes you think correct when you go for the skill. Right. And I mean, technically, it's, to me, this is good. Yeah. Especially for this big event. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty Everything's calm. Everything's pretty decent. You're very calm. And fluidity, yeah. rhythm is another thing that tells me when you go with the rhythm, it's flowing. Mm -hmm. You're not trying to make a skill. You're trying to make a routine. Routine, yeah. Yes, and that gives me confidence. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh. pause. The dismount. <laughs> um, so, flashback. 
2007 world, so a year before this. Um, I had never been nervous about dismounts really ever uh, until that year. And I know everyone always says like, you can't think about the last time or like, you can't think like, what if, but since that, so anyways, I missed my foot on a dismount and I ended up just around a fat tuck. Yeah. Not good. Um, but I think this was always just, I just don't like dismounts. I never really did. But this was kind of the moment of also, again, sticking, trying to stick that landing and being so You're precise. Always doing it in a blind landing, obviously, for a reason. We always did this. Yeah. For your ankles to save. Right. But. Yeah. Pretty this good. Is, this is, tells me that you are in a very decent shape. Yeah. When you start sticking your. Uh, landings mm -hmm. like this the blind landings whatever we say that mm -hmm. it's it proves the point that you are ready to you moving forward you're very confident yeah okay well first of all you see you're saying calm down because i was la after so i'm like putting my backpack on i was last on beam and then we had to immediately go to floor and at that moment in my mind it's impossible to not think you could win the Olympics in literally a few minutes. You have one more routine left. But that was exactly what I was trying not to think of. Just one more routine. Like, go do it. And we move on to floor. So, unfortunately, this video doesn't have it. Um, but we're going to find it because... We bet it. That was quite a floor routine. What basically... <laughs> well, we have the floor routine, but the warm-up. What basically happened was, and a lot of people didn't see it. I don't know what coverage showed it, but... And you saw right after my beam routine, he said, calm down. Well, that's... He knew what he was saying because clearly I was not calm. We moved on. We clicked like quickly got on the podium and started warming up. And the first swimming pass that I warm up is my, I guess, essentially one of the easier ones, but back one and a half to a front one and a half. So just a combination pass. And I crashed, like landed like this on the floor yes. and like quickly just like got up and like my- Walk up. Yeah, and I was like, whoa, okay. And then literally you just went like, you went like this, and I was just like, okay, calm down. Take a breath. This is, yeah. this is exactly what proves the point that you're not here yet. Yeah. Because that's the easiest pass for you, and you just crush that. So, I mean, the other like, thing. Like, yeah. did you, obviously that was like a whoa moment for both of us, but were you now, were you now more nervous for my floor team when that happened? Uh, or were you glad well, that I, I did, did that in the warm up? No, to get up? it's not that. I was nervous because this is the last floor routine. Yeah. And that two and a half when you were little. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All these years my in the back of last. my mind. Interesting. I never thought of that. That's the only thing I was worried about, honestly. Really? But of course, I did not tell you a lot of things. Oh, well, yeah, of course. What I'm thinking about. But that floor routine, oh, yeah. Yeah. That was difficult. For me to watch. Although this is, I have to say, not easiest event, but, but technically yeah. you were prepared. I mean, for the last maybe even three or four months, you only had maybe three mistakes. Yeah. Do you remember we were talking about this? You, that was already easy for you. Yeah. Once after Olympic trials, from Olympic trials essentially to the Olympics. Yeah. You were not, yeah. you were not breaking. Yeah, I think the one thing, and I, and I think all of us really, once we got to Beijing, I don't know if it was because it was the podium or something, we were all going out of bounds a lot, um, like every single one of us. Like I think in the team, in prelims and team finals, at least all of us went out one at least one time. Um, so really all I thought of was not, I wasn't even, and you kind of taught me this, you know, obviously when you were competing, it wasn't, it was like a confidence thing in the sense of don't worry or don't question if you're going to make it or not question, like think about like how, how great you're going to make it in the sense of, you know, don't be scared to fall. Cause once you start thinking, am I going to fall? I'm fall. I'm, I'm scared to fall. That's normally when that happens or a mistake. It was more so, okay, how do I stick this landing? Like, what do I need to do in order to make this the best pass for skill routine 
And so that's kind of what I was thinking before my quarantine. Of you're good, you're good gymnast. Then learn, <laughs> learn apparently from the best. I remember um, what we did on the day of the same thing. We yeah, did, it's not that we are working on the routines. Make it. Do you remember before the Olympics what we work on? If more than two wobbles, yeah. we didn't count routine. Right. We did not talk about poles at all. Yeah. We were talking about wobbles. Yeah. So that's essentially the same thing on the floor, right? So you were thinking that way on the floor. We're not perfectionists at all or anything. No. <laughs> um, but I mean, um, that's obviously what it has to come down to. Hey, but on the win, <laughs> this is how you win. But on floor, especially, I remember thinking just honestly, I, I only was thinking about just stay in bounds. And, and even though like stepping out of bounds isn't like life or death, but it kind of helped me focus on like the little smaller details and not think like, oh my gosh, you're 90 seconds away from, yeah. Do you know what, what I was thinking? I still remember to this day when I competed on the high bar, mm. the whole routine. Because that was your last event. Not and, to make a step yeah. on the lane because back then there was 10 0 court, on, right? Court, uh, court. Yeah, that's the only thing not the releases, not the handstands, not to make a step on the lane because that will do it for you. Yeah, that's exactly. I guess you were in the great shape when yeah. you're thinking about that. Not to not not to make a routine, but not to not make to a make, step. Yeah. Uh, well, and I think that's you yeah. know why, like we were so physically prepared, the gymnastics, and a, and a lot of people always ask about the mental aspect to it. And it's like, at this given point, yes, of course it's physical, but we had put in all the training and the numbers and the, everything, and it comes down a lot to the mental side of it, right? Of like the amount of pressure, and it wasn't even like pressure from any other people. I get asked this a lot. It was just like, me wanting to do my best it wasn't like oh i'm i feel pressure from someone you know whatever to live up to something it was literally like me wanting to do my best so anyways floor team and the commentator my colleagues now <laughs> um i remember um right before it was like they said this is it um this could be a routine of a lifetime so. Yeah, it was. Sure is. Once again, there's three out of four passes the blind lane. Did. Yeah. <laughs> Starting with the first that's one. When you try to stick, that's. Mm. <laughs> I stayed in balance. And um, especially when you stay in balance. Yeah. That's just... And then this, my double front was, was never really loved flipping I loved twisting more but as soon as I got through the second pass uh, yeah I yeah, kind of took a breath but then obviously the third pass is the one I crashed on in warm-ups I wasn't even thinking about it or wasn't nervous um I just remember but you see you in the <laughs> you see you in the corner being like you kidding me you're about 30 seconds away yeah being an Olympic champion or not <laughs> yeah yeah, that was it. It was, it was, yeah, it was a little straight legs. Yeah, but stayed in balance. Yes, you um, did. And then there's a moment coming up. So like after I do, oh, and then my double turn obviously was like we had to make sure that you get that um, all the way around. Like it was, yeah. it was decent. You, you had, I yeah. see a head nod. Um, and then right after this leap, I look, I have a pose. And that's where I think I got about ten years older. This. <laughs> Couple seconds, <laughs> right? Yeah, but smart. You did not. I didn't try to stick it. <laughs> I see <laughs> At what that you point, did. yeah, I knew. Um, I also see. didn't do a back hit. I had space to like go a little forward, and I I never really stepped out of bounds on that pass. So I just, um, I knew that it was, yeah. Yeah, in my mind, actually, I thought this is it. This is gonna do it. But you also never know. It's like you have to, you know, wait for the scores to come up. I wasn't last. A few more people to go. And um, I think in that moment, though, it was really we did everything we could. There was Absolutely. no regrets. And I and I remember. Absolutely. That's the best competition you ever done. Mm -hmm. So this is just. And I remember the year, once the year turned 2008, it was 
you know, we talked about that and we kind of both said, no matter what happens, let's not have any regrets kind of. And yeah, we did it. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, that was exactly it. And I think now, and I, I feel like what's cool to watch, you know, now and, and kind of being in a different position is as athletes, you're obviously extremely nervous as coaches and then add on a parent role. It's probably times a hundred. Um, me now watching, even, you know, I, I commentate now and, or just watching my friends, you don't have control. You don't know what's going on in someone's mind. So no matter how prepared you might be, it's still like nerve wracking. It is. It is <laughs> especially at this competition. And especially sometimes they say, oh, she's so talented. It's not so bad. It's mm -hmm. not so bad. No, this is put a lot more pressure on the coach. Why? I tell you why. Because if the very talented gymnast, mm -hmm. at least that's what in my mind. Yeah. If, if the talented gymnast do not deliver, it's the coaches. <laughs> yeah. It's if I coach. cannot, you know, deliver yeah. the results with the diamond in my hands, mm -hmm. especially my daughter. <laughs> no <laughs> Just pressure. imagine what I felt. But I, of course, you did not know that. And now that you're old enough to understand and you see all that, the other side of the yeah. metal, as we say. You know, they just... Well, I've always said... Not easy. Yeah, I've always said it was so funny because I never felt... That pressure, especially from, you know, people are all, a lot of different sides, but people are always like, oh, don't you feel pressure to live up to, like, what your parents did? And as a young girl, like, are you kidding? No, I thought it was the coolest thing. Then it was the Olympic year and, like, at nationals and trials, I remember all of a sudden people were like, okay, like, now don't you feel pressure to, like, achieve what they did? And I was like, no, I never have, so stop putting it in my head. Um, but then I obviously started thinking about it. And um, so, yeah, I felt not necessarily pressure to live up to that. It was like pressure that I was like, I always wanted to achieve those things too, right? So it was more so that, not necessarily I had to achieve these things, but yeah, understanding, you know, for you, <laughs> that kind of pressure, like, well, yeah, and obviously I knew you, and some people would probably think, oh, you've been pushed too hard. It's, it's, we, we, your mom and I, we follow your dream, basically, mm -hmm. and that's what it takes mm -hmm. to become the greatest. Yeah. You know, to do this much, yeah. to follow that path, because I, actually, yeah. I already gone this yeah. this path. Yeah. And uh, I know what it takes, mm -hmm. not Losing all round by one, one ten. Well, you actually know that too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> two thousand five world one one. So yeah. you know what it is, and you know every little yeah. bit counts, especially at this level, because everybody is so good. Mm -hmm. And I believe top five or yeah, whatever. Yeah, it was like one of the greatest. Fought. Yeah, it was one of the nobody greatest all fought. around competitions. It, it was. Really was. Yeah. Nobody had breaks. Nobody mm -hmm. had mistakes. It was top. Yeah. It was, and there was so much fun actually yeah. to win when nobody had mistakes. That's when it's best, obviously. Absolutely. Not when like That's you just you. win by yeah. That means um, you're good. You're ready. You did that. Yeah. For but, real. Yeah. Anyways, uh, that was fun to kind of go back in time. So, uh, lots of nerves, but also obviously just so exciting when. You put in a lot of work together and, and your dreams come true. So thanks for watching. Thanks for having your YouTube debut <laughs> on my new channel. Um, and we have some other fun stuff planned. So make sure you guys stay tuned and subscribe. And see you next time. <laughs>